But we will be praying. I think we mentioned this Wednesday night is National Day of Prayer. Thursday is National Day of Prayer. Wednesday night we'll be talking about prayer and connecting it with that. We'll be praying over the people in this situation. But we're also going to be praying over our nation. Some people say, why do things like this happen? Well, I think the most important thing to remember is the dividing line of the Bible. Would you open your Bible, please, to John chapter 10? And even when we don't know all, when we don't understand, and sometimes you think you don't understand something, and it's not that you don't understand. You just don't know what else is going on. All you know is big bad storms came through, but you don't know what else has been happening. You don't know what else is going on. But one of the key things we have learned to watch over the years is Israel and our government's reaction to it. As Sister Billy explains to us, you know, in um, the Jewish people, their tradition, when they get married, they get married under a hoopah. What is a hoopah? You know, that's that covering that they step under. When we were in Israel, we saw two different weddings that were happening at the hotel we were in, and it was spectacularly gorgeous. These were very, very beautiful high-dollar weddings, but their, the hoopah was outstanding. It was white and covered in flowers. It was beautiful, but they're married under the hoopah. What is the hoopah? The covering of God's blessing. But there are things you can do, as Sister Billy says, to shoot holes in your hoopah. Or you could be, you could be that you don't have a hoopah at all. When you think about a nation like Japan, what kind of spiritual blessing do they have operating for them? So much of that nation has rejected the gospel. They've rejected God for thousands of years. And you don't have something in place to protect you from the buildup and the, the dynamic of sin. So we, thankfully, in this nation, we do have a spiritual hoopah over this nation. But sometimes we have people making decisions that do weaken it and shoot holes in it. And so we see this in John 10.10. 10, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. What's he coming for? The Bible says he searches, looking for whom he may devour. He's looking for the hoopah with the holes in it. You know? And there are a lot of things that come on uh, people because of, of the um, national decisions. And I, you know, I won't get into all this. I'll try to restrain myself, but I will tell you this where you say, what has America done about Israel? Well, I'll just tell you this one little thing. There's, as you have, if you've been listening in the middle of all this and just past the royal wedding, you will have heard that they have decided that the, the United Nations have called for a Palestinian state to be effective in September, whether Israel likes it or not, to draw them back to the 1967 borders, which means giving up Jerusalem with no, de no demand on the Palestinian state to acknowledge Israel's right to exist and no required peace treaty. Hamas and Hezbollah and the Palestinian Authority have now shaken hands and formed a single government in preparation for this Palestinian state in September. And you say, well, our government didn't do that. Well, the, the word that we got on it is that because this administration understands that this nation would not go for that, has been putting pressure on the United Nations and European countries to move it forward and to, to make it happen so that we're under the radar on it. Not going to fly. So we're going to be praying about that on Wednesday night. I want you to come. We need your help. Praise the Lord. So who is it that comes to steal, kill, and destroy? Say it loud. Who is it? You have to be bold about that and understand it and know it adamantly because every the mindset of the world and too many Christians is that God sent it. God's do it. Yeah, what's God's judgment? God's not judging Alabama. God judged sin. And he said, when sin overflows, it overflows unto judgment. Judgment comes on that mess in order to put a stop to it and move it out of the way. Amen. 
And so the thief gets in with there. He's the one that produces stealing, killing, and destroying. But Jesus said, I have come that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance. Have it more abundantly. More abundantly than what? Jesus came to bring life in more abundance than the thief can kill, than the thief can steal, and than the thief can destroy. He goes over the top with it. So that is our, our founding, foundation cornerstone of who God is, who Jesus is, and who the devil is. And it helps a lot to know who your enemy is. Now look in Malachi chapter 3. We're familiar with this scripture, of course, as a tither. You know this verse. But we want to recognize something in that that shows us God's plan. He has a plan for dealing with these situations. And his plan says, bring the tithe, all the tithe, into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. What is the storehouse? Whose house is it? Oh, this is not hard. <laughs> Whose house is it we're bringing it into? God's house. His house. He said, my house. Bring ye all the tithe into my house. Why did he say to do that? He said, and see if I will not open. He said, so there'll be food in my house. See if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And why is that? He wants things brought into this house so that this house can take the blessing, the overflow blessing, and reach out to other people because there's a blessing on it. There's a blessing on what is brought in here. God blesses it so it will do more. Thank God for the Red Cross. Thank God for all the people that help. I'm thankful for them. And sometimes the Lord has led me to help them. But my tithe is coming into the house of the Lord to the hands of the saints that are on purpose doing something with because it's blessed. It will produce an eternal outcome. You remember Jesus with the woman at the well? She came to get a natural drink of water, and he talked to her about an eternal drink of water. Why is that? Because the eternal fountain will produce the natural fountain. It'll meet the needs. It'll conquest the situation. It'll conquer it. it it'll cause you to rise above, but it doesn't end with a natural rescue. It ends with an eternal and a spiritual rescue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we want the blessing working. And he said, bring that, bring the tithe here. I'll bless it. And then there's not room enough for you to hold on to it. You have, you can distribute it and give it. And he said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He will not be able to destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine drop its fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord. Isaiah 59, 19, 19 says, When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise a standard against him. What does that mean, raise a standard against him? If you look the Hebrew word up that's translated, will raise a standard, it can also be translated, will chase away, will make evaporate. In other words, make it look like he was never there. And not only never there, but when God moves in and he raises things up, he raises it up to a much higher, glorious standard, much bigger, much better. It'll make it even, that's why some people blame God for things, because it comes out, it comes out so good that it looks like God did it in order to produce a, a better outcome. That's not true. But, but God is so good at turning around what the devil intends. He is so good at putting down what the devil has done. He will cause great uh, blessing even to come out of situations where the devil has had his hand in it. And that's what we're believing for. That's what we want to be a part of. And he says to bring it into his house. Now, last look at uh, Galatians chapter 6. And we're taking a little extra time with this today because pastor's going to tie right into this in this message, which I didn't know that until we talked right before the service. So 
That was good. If Galatians 6 says, 7, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that and that only is what he will reap. For he who sows to his own flesh will reap destruction. But he who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap life. How do you reap and sow and reap to the Spirit? By faith. We do things because the Word says. We do it and we expect the outcome to be because the Word says it will be that way. Faith is not just obedience, but it's obedience with an expectation of a promised outcome. Faith says, yes, I will do that, and therefore I expect God to do, do what He said. And that's the way He wants you to do it. Put all the pressure you can on His Word, and you do that by faith. So we, we're obedient. Now let's keep reading. He says, don't lose heart. Don't grow weary in well-doing. So as every opportunity opens up, let us do good to all people, but be mindful to be a blessing, especially to the household of faith. And so God's plan is always the household of faith first. Because that's where the blessing can be at work with those that are not of the household of faith. They cannot be blessed by themselves. They cannot bless themselves. They cannot access the blessing themselves. It takes the people of God to bring the blessing of God to people who need it. So we bring it to the household of faith, the house of God, and we also bring it to the household of faith. Now, when you bring your tithe into this storehouse, the top 10% of everything that comes into this church, everything that comes into this church, the top 10% is set aside to be a blessing and minister to other people, whether it's through other ministries, uh, people in our own congregation that, that are in a crisis situation or in situations that we're in uh, right now with these other uh, parts of the country. But then we also have the disaster relief fund. And that is not our tithes, it's our offerings that we have brought in in order to be a blessing, first of all, to the household of faith. We take care of the household of faith. Why? Because if we put it in the hands, if we, we get the blessing to the household of faith, that blessing will multiply to people all around them. And there will be a resurrection of life drawn up like that song we just sang well it draws us up out of the ashes and only God can do that he'll bring up lives out of ashes he'll bring up houses and homes and cities and whatever else is needed he will do it and he will do it not only to his glory but people will be lifted up and lives will be restored a government cannot restore a life but Jesus can